To add insult to injury, everybody feels a little bit awkward because it didn't go great. And it's just shredding the paint off the wall. And like sitting there staring at it thinking, of course. For this morning's photo shoot was to test out this DJI Mavic Air 2. I picked this up a few weeks ago. Really excited to get acquainted with it and start using it for photo and video, but we're gonna have to save that for a little bit later because of course there was a chance of rain and it decided to start raining the minute I opened the bag to uh, get the drone out. So we'll save that for later. We have a bunch of other stuff I wanna create today, but in the spirit of photo shoots getting messed up and not going according to plan, today we are gonna talk about the worst photo shoot of my entire career, of my entire photography journey, this photo shoot will go down in history as the one that everything went wrong. I mean, literally everything. I'm determined to learn how to use this thing because I'm finally gonna take advantage of drone technology. But if you're an OG of the OG on this YouTube channel, you know I used to get out and play basketball every now and again. I would go to the gym in the morning and shoot around. It was kind of a way to do cardio. Then I really got into running and I haven't done it lately. So I got out here with my brother about two weeks ago and shot a basketball for the first time, I think in a year and a half. It might be two years. Here we go. Spray. So I'm gonna stick to it, but back to this story of the worst photo shoot, it all started around that time. So if you're one of the OGs on the channel, you remember a long time ago, I said I was gonna do a vlog in New York because I was working with a company, and then I made a video saying I lied because I never filmed the vlog, and I never told y'all the details of that trip. Basically, this company reached out to me, it was a guy who found me through YouTube. He said, hey, my company needs new headshots for their website, and they also needed some street and cityscape style photos to use on their new website. So it was kind of a weird gig because I didn't have any experience in the headshot side of things, but I had a lot of experience in the cityscape, street photography type stuff. So I reached out to my buddy Chris, who did have experience, and said, hey, this seems like the perfect job for us. We can both go to New York, we get a free trip out of it, we can make some city photos, and then we get paid to do this gig with this company. Do you want to handle the headshot piece? I'll handle the cityscape piece. He said, of course. And I thought we were off to the races on the type of job everyone dreams about when they get into photography, a trip to another city on someone else's dime, you're going with one of your buddies, what could go wrong? I think the drone is charged up at this point. I just did a six mile run. Now we're gonna head to this location that we have been to twice on the YouTube channel and I'm still not happy with the results. So we're gonna go back for a third time. So made it out to Talmo, Georgia, and let me tell you, it is hotter than the day back out here right now. It is ridiculous. But the reason we're here today is because I'm finalizing the new book. I am so excited about it. Y'all know I was working on this book a lot last year, and right now I'm finalizing the layout, finalizing the pages. And when I went to finish the pages from this location, they just didn't look right. I didn't like the way they looked. They didn't fit the whole aesthetic of the book. So today we're giving it one last shot. Before I make these photos, let me tell you more about this photo shoot. And I literally can't see anything. So I'm gonna talk like this. I'm not squinting the entire time, but everything looked good. They sent us the money. We had the hotel reservations. We had the flight. All we had to do was show up and get the job done. But there were these massive storms in New York and Atlanta the day we were supposed to leave. So we get to the airport, flight is delayed four or five hours. Now this wouldn't have been a big deal at all if the captain of the ship, me, was actually prepared, but my d thought it'd be a great idea to just buy everything we needed when we got to New York, and now our flight was gonna land when everything was closed.
while I'm driving home, I quickly want to thank our sponsor today, Squarespace. And believe it or not, Squarespace actually plays a part in this story because the client from today's episode actually contacted me through my website, evanramp.com. And one of the reasons I've continued to work with Squarespace as a sponsor on this channel is because of how much value they provided my photo business from day one. I've said this multiple times, a website is one of the easiest ways to look professional to potential clients and also set yourself apart from everybody else out there. And Squarespace makes this process simple. And if you don't believe me, you can check out the multiple videos I have on this channel where I break down how you can build an online store with Squarespace, how you can build a website just like mine, evanramp.com, so clients can get in contact with you. I also have a video break down how to build a simple portfolio website so any potential client you meet you can send them to your website and they can check out all your photos right there on your home page so if you want to try out squarespace after watching any of those videos you can go to squarespace.com slash to start a free trial and you can use code evanramp to get 10 percent off when you sign up at squarespace.com slash evanramp to start a free trial and use code evanramp to get 10 percent off when it's time to make your first purchase twist of grapefruit Pretty fire right there. So we land in New York. The plan was to go to B&H Photo. Obviously we had the delays, can't go to B&H. So we have no backdrop. In hindsight, I should have just ordered the backdrop and had it shipped to the company a week in advance. I should have been prepared, but I wasn't. So we had to improvise. And the idea we came up with was to buy a bed sheet from a Dwayne Reed. Dwayne Reed is like a Walgreens, it's like a drugstore. A bed sheet that was in a package like this big, just crammed in there, folded up, a billion folds in it, and we were gonna use it as the backdrop for headshots. Great idea, Evan. And you know, we knew this could be a problem, so what did we do? We bought a $20 iron from the Dwayne Reed to get that out, you know? We didn't have an ironing board, we didn't have anything like that, we were just gonna use the table at this office. Why did I do this? So the next morning comes around, it's 6.30 a.m., we get to the client, and because we had to get there so early, that was why we couldn't go to B&H in the morning to get the necessary supplies. We just had to make do with what we had. So we get there at 6.30, set everything up, we gaff tape this sheet to the wall, and I was pretty optimistic. I started thinking, you know, maybe this is gonna be one of those situations where it just looks crappy, but once you see the final result, you'll be amazed that we were able to make something out of nothing. You know, people do it all the time, not a big deal. So once we're all set up, we have a meeting with the creative director of this company. And this was the moment I knew this is gonna be a real issue because the creative director had one vision and expectation for how this photo shoot was gonna go, how this website was gonna look. And the guy who contacted me and booked me for this was just an employee at the company. He was basically a middleman between me and this creative guy. The problem with this is it made the expectation of the shoot very unclear. The creative director had one idea of how it was gonna go. I had one idea of how it was gonna go, which was communicated by a middle person. That is a huge issue. In hindsight, I should have just met with this creative guy over the phone or over Skype before we booked any of this to make sure we were on the same page with everything because it was fairly obvious we were not. So the entire day I spend trying to smooth everything over, I go out and do my piece of the job, make my city and street photos. I come back, I can tell the vibe is completely off. I can tell Chris is frustrated. I can tell this creative director is frustrated. I'm trying to smooth it over by doing photo shoots around the office, trying to get some like B-roll type photos, just something to make everybody a little bit happier. And all in all, we left the day, I felt okay. I felt like 50% thinking, this could have gone either way, you know? Maybe it went good, maybe it went bad. We'll see how the photos look when we get home. And then just to add insult to injury, my favorite moment of the entire day, I wish I had made a photo of this. We're getting all packed up. Everybody feels a little bit awkward because it didn't go great. And we start ripping this gaff tape off the wall and it's just shredding the paint off the wall. This wall is getting destroyed. <laughs> and like, I'm sitting there staring at it thinking, of course. Of course we're just gonna rip all the paint off this. If the photo shoot didn't go bad enough, we also ruined their office. And the, the poor guy who booked us is trying to make me feel better saying, ah, it's all good, it's a temporary office. You know, the paint's crappy anyways, it's no big deal. But it was just one of those moments like leaving a bad date or something. It's already awkward and then you just throw that cherry on top, just ruining the day. So we get home, I edit all the photos. I'm thinking, all right, here we go. I got them loaded up in a Google Doc. I hit send, say a little prayer, and just hope that they're happy with it. 
few days go by, your boy goes to the gym to work out, I get in the sauna, and for whatever reason, another situation here that never happens. People rarely recognize me from the YouTube channel out in public, but on this day, somebody noticed me in the locker room and followed me into the sauna to ask me questions about photography just as I was opening my phone to see the email of this client saying, we hate everything, we are so unhappy, they were ripping into me, and I got this guy trying to talk to me, asking me questions about photo, and I felt like a real jerk because I was way too distracted by what was happening with this email. How does all this happen in just one photo shoot? So anyways, long story short, I just give the client all their money back. I knew we weren't gonna reconcile this and I learned some really valuable lessons from it. One, leadership is a skill that you have to learn. It takes time and I was just way too lax about everything. You know, I should have set a more clear expectation with Chris. I should have done a better job of getting us prepared for the shoot. I should have done a better job of getting in contact with the person who was actually gonna be directing us, who was in charge of this new website that the job was for. All of those pieces I failed on. You know, in a situation like that, you gotta be prepared and expect everything to go wrong and be prepared for the worst and hope for the best. I didn't do that, I was way too optimistic, didn't coordinate well, didn't lead well, and it was just an all around failure and learning experience on my part. So I wanted to share it with you today. What a photo shoot. Interesting. I'm sure a lot of you guys have stories as well, so drop them in the comments if you have anything funny, if anything like this has happened to you before. Remember, 1826.com for the drip, the freshest apparel for creatives out there. Head over there, you can cop a hoodie. We got a few left. Thank you for watching today. Thumbs up, subscribe. See you next time.